folks, I'm back with you today and I want to talk to you a little bit before we get started about my Facebook page uh, for my blog talk radio show that is www.blogtalkradio.com slash welcome to my world. That's the blog talk radio show address and I'll try to put that in the box below when I have finished editing this video. <clears throat> Now we have a Facebook page for Welcome to My World, and this YouTube channel that I have started is actually an offshoot of Welcome to My World. Uh, this Dominique Does Life uh, YouTube page is an offshoot of Welcome to My World. So I want to invite you to go on Facebook and look up uh, Welcome to My World with Dom, and I will put that link in the box below for you. And if you have a question or a comment or a story you'd like to share on an anonymous basis, or we can assign you a pseudonym if you'd prefer, uh, something that maybe you don't want to share right here on YouTube, maybe you have a question that you really need answered, but you don't really want to pay for a session, you don't want to come in for a whole session or set up a coaching program just for one question or one comment. Maybe you want to see how I'll answer it and see if you want to engage my services further at that point. If you would like, if you have a question, comment, or story you'd like to share, please do feel free to visit us at facebook.com slash welcome to my world with Dom. And again, please feel free to look that up on Facebook. If for some reason the link doesn't work properly, I promise you'll find us. Uh, give us a like so that you are aware of upcoming shows so that you can actually hear your question being answered live on the air or live right here in a video. So give us a like on that page. Um, it's a brand new page. And do that so that you'll be, again, aware of when your question might be answered and aware of what shows are coming up and what videos are coming up so that you will know when to listen for your answer. Um, and I will get to everybody who writes in. So far it's been, it's been tough, but we've been able to get to everybody who has written in either for the live uh, video or for blog talk radio show. So please feel free to write in. And again, uh, we will not share your identity with anyone unless for some reason you want me to. I don't know why you would, but that is your business, my dear. So again, feel free. We'll be here to, to field your questions and then I will answer them live on air or live here in a video and we'll keep you up to date on uh, when you can expect a Q&A show and when you can expect a Q&A uh, section in our videos. So uh, that'll be a good way to kind of see, you know, what, what, services do I offer? How am I going to answer things? What am I like, right? Before actually potentially engaging me in a coaching program or, you know, just a la carte hour long sessions, right? And, and even if you just have one question and that's all, boom, there you go. Good way to have it answered for free. So check us out and uh, give us a like. And certainly um, if you have any more pressing issues or a more like detailed story that you want to share or if you have issues that you'd like to work on feel free to reach out to me and we can work together one-on-one -on -one and get a consulting or coaching program started for you or even just do a couple of uh, a la carte consultations and see how things go now today we are going to talk about the integrity trap and the purity trap which are two opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to narcissists sociopaths and really all cluster bees in general now let's talk really quickly about <clears throat> the integrity trap because there are a couple of aspects to the purity trap that i want to discuss with you so let's first get the integrity trap out of the way so you know uh, exactly what that is and a few other folks have done uh similar videos here on on youtube please check them out the more information you get the more armed you are and the more tools you have in your tool belt, nothing wrong with that. Go check out some of the other videos. You can go ahead and uh, enter narcissism and the purity trap and narcissism and the integrity trap into the search bar here on YouTube. It'll take you two seconds. Go check it out. Uh, be informed. I think being forewarned is always being forearmed. And a couple of the YouTube personalities that I like are Kim Wilson TV, 
Sasha Sloan. And um, I really, I really like a wonderful woman by the name of Angie Atkinson. Now, none of these people are in any way asking me to do plugs for them. They may or may not be happy that I did, but I'm going to do it because I'm going to always keep my commitment to be real with you guys and be as upfront as possible. You know, it's not about me. <laughs> Certainly this channel is not even about me. It may be called Dominique Does Life, but it's about all of us. And it's about being forewarned and it's about being forearmed and it's about having those tools in our tool belt at all times, no matter where you get them from. The source does not always matter. Now, we all do have our own spin on things and I think that's excellent and we should continue to search out <clears throat> different sources of information so that we can always, always find different perspectives because, um, as my dad always said, question everything, no matter who says it, no matter where it comes from, okay? So, uh, that being said, let's move on to the integrity trap. The integrity trap is something that cluster bees, narcissists in particular, but all cluster bees, use to try to bait you into sort of abandoning your integrity, abandoning your decency. They will try to bait you into acting a certain way. Oftentimes, narcissists in particular, sociopaths as well, even some histrionics, some borderlines, will try to make you look, as we talked about in our gaslighting video, they'll try to make you look like you're crazy or like you're not um, an appropriate source of information. You're not to be trusted. You're not somebody that other people should come to, what have you. So essentially, they're trying to make you look like somebody who um, doesn't have any credibility. They're trying to discredit you. <clears throat> and when that happens, very unfortunately and very sadly, uh, those of us who are empathetic or empathic, and we will get to that, I promise, we'll get to the whole empathy slash, um, you know, empath thing, but uh, not right now. But if you are empathic or empathetic, uh, unfortunately, this works very, very well on you, my friends. Uh, it has worked on me. It has worked on me. And I will be the first to admit it. I was with a gentleman who was a cluster B. I think he ex he was somewhere on the spectrum between like borderline and narcissist. And it just, you know, it was very sad because I knew him since we were quite young and, you know, kids, in fact. And I think that, you know, had he had a less chaotic upbringing, uh, he might have turned out differently. I, I think he was a different person when he was younger than he was as he got into his teens and his 20s and so on. He, he could have been a good man, I think, and it's very sad um, that this has happened to him. But, you know, I was with somebody, him, uh, who would, you know, I would play right into his hands. He would say things to his family and his uh, other friends so that they wouldn't connect with me and we wouldn't be able to talk and we wouldn't be able to share his stories and, and realize that, oh my God, this guy is a complete asshole, you know? So he would actually actively try to keep us apart. Um, his uh, parents and I had a decent rapport. His siblings and I had a decent rapport. He didn't like that. Some of his friends and I had a decent rapport. And uh, I'll tell you what, he did. He wasn't going to stand for that. He wasn't going to have that. So he, what did he do? He went on a smear campaign. He tried to make me sound like a crazy person. And then he would tell me that they had said something awful about me just before we were going to go see them. I would feel uncomfortable. I would feel upset and sad and, and concerned and then, of course, I would go in acting differently around those people that he had just told me had, you know, smeared me or spoken ab about me in a disrespectful manner. Now, what does that do for them? Okay, they hadn't spoken about me in a disrespectful manner. That was all BS. That was a lie. So to them, when I go in acting kind of funny, you know, that confirms the story that he's been feeding to them behind my back that I'm crazy or that I'm a bitch or that I'm this or that I'm that or that I'm just not very nice or I don't like them or I think I'm better than them. That was the story he would try to feed to them. 
And that's a narrative I've kind of fought all of my life uh, because I do tend to be a very outgoing person. I tend to try to look nice. I'm, I mean, I think everybody does, but I tend to try to look nice. I'm outgoing and friendly. I, I make eye contact with people, I'll, you know, how do you do, I'll shake their hand. And I think for whatever reason, people sometimes see that as intimidating or they think I'm being fake. Not at all. I really enjoy people. I really enjoy getting out there and living life and getting to know people and I'm a confident person. And that can shape people. Uh, and, and it can make people question, you know, are you being genuine? Why are you being so nice to me? Um, are you trying to compete with me? You know, why are you wearing that outfit? Do you think you look better than I do? And it's just this whole thing. And guess what? Cluster bees play on that kind of thing. Um, so did I do everything perfectly with him and his family? Oh my God, no. I, I messed up so many times. I can tell you what, I acted like a fool several times. I acted like a jerk several times. And I'll tell you, I, I snapped at uh, his folks a couple of times after hearing things he had told me that they had said. And, you know, do I have any excuse for that? No, because I'm in control of my behavior. And that's the point I want to illustrate. You are in control of your behavior. The narcissist, the cluster B, the sociopath is not. You are, my friend. You are in control of your behavior at all times. And you need to stay aware of that fact. You need to realize that fact. And you need to internalize that fact. So, broader point being, you are always in control of your behavior. Nobody else is. You have 100% control. And you must internalize that as soon as humanly possible. Now, Anytime you are thinking about internalizing a potential truth about yourself or anybody else, you should always kind of run it by your higher self, your inner self, you know, however you want to put it, whether you're an atheist, whether you're spiritual, whether you're religious, we, I think we all have like an inner self or a higher self. And um, you should really check in with that part of yourself and say, okay, does this res resonate with me? Does this sound true? Does this feel right? And if it does, I invite you to adopt that as part of your narrative, because as soon as you do, you are going to feel very differently about things. You're going to gain a newfound confidence. You're going to gain uh, a newfound respect for yourself. And, um, you know, that's really going to diminish what the narcissist, the sociopath, or the other cluster B uh, in individual is going to be able to do as far as controlling you and as far as setting a narrative that they favor. Now, as I mentioned, um, my ex, um, who I was with for many years, actually, and who I started dating at, really at, at a youngish age, um, would set this narrative with his folks and with his family and his friends. And the narrative would be, you know, Dominique is a bitch. Dominique thinks she's better than you. Dominique doesn't like you. When that was the first, furthest possible thing from the truth, I did everything I could do to try to get these people to like me. But because a couple of times I had behaved poorly after he kind of set me up to abandon my integrity, and I bit, you know, that ship had sailed. And was it all my fault? Absolutely not. I'm not going to take responsibility for his, you know, bad behavior. But... Was some of it my fault? Uh, yes, it was. Yes. And I, I don't want you to get into the same situation. Now, if you've got a narcissist or a cluster B at work, it's much easier than having a family member or a loved one or even a close friend or somebody who's posing as a close friend as a cluster B. Because at work, you can kind of um, more easily see that divide. You can more easily... Um, see that, you know, there's no truth to what they're saying. It's all bullshit. It's, it's ridiculous. You don't have that emotional involvement, right? That emotional component that is so enticing and that is so tough to break free of. You don't have that because it's a colleague. You don't have an emotional connection to your colleague. You really don't care um, what your colleague does outside of work or how they feel about you as long as they get the project done, right? And so... It's the academic.
if you're talking about somebody in your personal life, uh, a family member, a loved one, what have you, then it can be a little bit more challenging because emotions are involved and, you know, certainly your internal narrative and your internal dialogue um, becomes involved at that point uh, more heavily than it would if you were just working with a coworker or somebody that you had to work with from time to time. Now, this does tie into one aspect of the purity trap. The purity trap is where the cluster B tries to entice you into eliminating people from your life that they deem to be toxic. Now, are these folks really toxic? No, never. They are people that the narcissist, the sociopath, or the other cluster B feels threatened by. They're not actually toxic. That cluster B just feels very threatened that you're very close with your mom or with his folks or her folks or what have you. You're very close with your dad, your sister, your brother, your friends. He, he or she is very threatened by that. He, she, or they, I should say, are, are very threatened by that. And they're very uncomfortable with that. And so what they would like more than anything is for you to break free of those horribly toxic, i.e., wonderfully supportive, caring, and understanding people in your life who would probably stand up to the narcissist or to the cluster B if it came down to it. They don't want people like that in your life, guys. They want people in your life who are on their side, who are their friends, who are their family members, who are their loyal flying monkeys and support personalities. They don't want people who are loyal to you. They want people who are loyal to them and whoever they deem to have in their life at the time, right? So that's the difference. They want you to eliminate anybody that they don't see to be fit for you, i.e. anybody who is supportive of you and not them. So they will very quickly try to go in and cut you off and separate you out from all of those wonderful people. And, you know, again, I would always say that the best plan is to remove yourself as quickly as possible and simply go no contact with the cluster B. Do not keep them around. If they're a work uh, acquaintance, you may have to. You have to deal with toxic people, folks. You know, you do. You're not going to just quit your job. You need insurance. You need money. You need to be able to pay your rent, your mortgage, what have you. You need to be able to put food on your table. So if you're going to try to eliminate yourself uh, from any toxic relationships at work, not going to not gonna happen. I hate to tell you. That's why you need the tools that we have talked about in previous videos. You need to have those tools in your tool belt so that you can easily deal with those people and still feel confident in your workplace. Um, now... If somebody is really targeting you, I mean, if somebody is making threats against you and that sort of thing, then no, you should not stick around and you should immediately inform HR and make sure that every communication is in writing between you and the cluster B and between you and HR. So obviously that's a horse of a different color. Um, but if it comes down to just working with somebody, again, I'm sorry, you, you just can't avoid every jerk out there in the world. It, it's not possible. And, you know, trying to do so, in, in my humble opinion, is a mental illness in and of itself. Okay, and we'll talk more about that later on. Um, so, you know, like I said, the best plan if somebody is in your personal life and is a cluster B is, of course, to move away as quickly as possible, to go no contact and to stay no contact. So that's really the very best uh, course of action and, and really the only course of action. If you have to co-parent with the person, again, use the tools that we've discussed in previous videos and uh, make sure those tools are tucked into your tool belt and your tool belt is on at all times and you won't be fooled with anymore by them. They will do what the narcopath that I had to work with for a couple of years did and not only will they probably never come back to you to re-idealize because they know you're a very poor target, they'll be intimidated by you. And they will, uh, of course, they're not going to, you know, grovel or anything like that. Not that you would want that, but they'll distance themselves from you. They will go no contact with you and the trash will essentially take itself out. So, um, you know, 
if, if you have to deal with folks, so in your personal life and, and you can't go complete no contact, like I said, if you're a co-parent or what have you, use the tools that we've uh, talked about in previous videos. And I will put links to those videos down below for your viewing pleasure. So once you have liked this video, shameless self-promotion, um, shameless plug time, once you have liked this video, go ahead and pull down that drop down menu in the box below and go ahead and click on the links to some of the videos that I'm going to be linking to. I'll try to put some cards up at the end of the video too that uh, show you what videos you will want to click on to uh, look into this a little bit more. Now, um, as far as the purity trap is concerned, this isn't the only way that the purity trap can affect you. If you are or have been in a relationship of any kind with a cluster B uh, disordered individual. Okay, the, the purity trap is something that um, because of the abuse you have suffered, and, and you have suffered abuse, by the way, um, because of the abuse that you have suffered, it, it, it becomes ingrained within your uh, internal dialogue, your internal narrative, your idea of who you are, your idea of who you want around you in your life. And you can go to the opposite extreme, unfortunately. Now, eliminating toxic people from your life, never a bad thing, right? Never a bad thing. But, but eliminating everyone from your life because they might be a toxic individual is always a bad thing. Sadly, uh, most of us suffer to some extent, some form of PTSD after having been in a relationship with somebody like this with a cluster B. Uh, it, it, it's pretty much inevitable. Uh, and apparently my cat is weighing in on the subject and it sounds like she agrees. <laughs> you know, um, talk about never being able to find a perfect situation in life. I'm trying to do this perfect video and here my cat is chiming in about whatever we're talking about. So you got to take the good with the bad is what I'm saying. Um, you can never find the perfect person. You'll never find the perfect group of friends, the perfect family, what have you. You'll never even find the perfect um, partner. You'll simply find somebody who is in possession of enough good qualities to offset the bad. And that is what life is about. It's a give and take. It's a matter of balance. But don't don't uh, fall into that trap of purity um, where you're going to be self-sabotaging and and eliminating the good people from your life. Uh, you know, you uh, many of us, especially after we've been in abusive situations, uh, and we'll talk more about this later as well, I promise. We'll get to these subjects at some point. Um, many of us fall into this self-help trap uh, called the law of attraction. It, it sounds so enticing. It sounds so interesting. It sounds so wonderful because essentially it tells us that we are able to control every single aspect of our lives. We're able to control every single relationship we have and our, guess what? We don't even always have to take action. Our thoughts control it all. Oh my gosh, what an enticing prospect. And of course, once you really look into it, you'll realize that it is a scary prospect too and a really horrifying, icky prospect. You know, if every thought I have controls something out in the world, my God, I'm going to be about the guiltiest person on earth, you know? Um, it, you know, that, that almost seems like delusions of grandeur to me to, to even think that, that every thought you have is controlling something or manifesting something out in the world. I mean, that's cuckoo kitty, folks. That That is simply cuckoo kitty. That's, that's nutty. And, um, you know, without really making fun of it, I, I do want to just caution you that I don't want you to fall into that trap. That's something that a lot of people promote, a lot of self-help people promote. I don't see anybody in the anti-cluster B, anti-narcissism community promoting it because we know better. We know better. Now, um, it, it, as much of an enticing prospect as I'm sure it is to think that we can eliminate every single toxic quality from our lives, we cannot. We possess toxic qualities, folks. We all do. We all do. We've all been an asshole from time to time. 
We've all said the wrong thing, been a jerk, been insensitive at, from time to time. And please own that. Please don't go around thinking, well, it's everybody else and not me. And similarly, don't think it's always me and never anyone else. But just realize that we all have the potential for toxic you know, behaviors within us. And it's a matter of finding balance and making sure that we don't enact those behaviors on a regular basis. And that when we do, we step up and take responsibility for them. Uh, taking responsibility not only entails apologizing, it entails um, actively realizing what behaviors you need to change and moving toward changing them in, in a, again, an active way. So um, can we eliminate everybody with a negative quality or a toxic quality from our lives? No, of course not. And should we? Uh, no, doesn't make any sense. Um, we would have no one in our lives. And you know what that's called, folks? That's called self-sabotage. That's called self-isolating behavior. And that is really taken to that extreme. Again, another disorder or another mental illness, at least, in and of itself. And, and why do you want that in your life? Isn't that in an, in and of itself negativity? Isn't that that awful word? Oh my gosh, negativity, that thing we don't want in our lives. Ooh, so scary. You know, anything taken to an extreme can be negative. Anything taken to an extreme can be toxic. It's a matter of finding balance. It's a matter of realizing that we will have to deal with toxic folks every once in a while. And it's a matter of... um recognizing who the actual toxic people are and who the people who just have put their foot in their mouth now and again are. And I think you're going to find that way more people than not uh, just simply put their foot in their mouth from time to time and, and don't mean anything negative by it whatsoever. Um, so don't self-isolate. Don't go to that end of the spectrum. Don't go to that extreme when it comes to this purity trap. Don't let your PTSD or your fear or your upset or your worry um, isolate you from good experiences. Sure, you're going to have some bad experiences getting back on the horse and putting yourself out there. It's going to happen, but you're going to have more positive experiences than you're going to have negative experiences. And if you don't allow for either you will have neither. You'll have neither of them. And you may be able to sit up on your high horse and tell yourself, see, I haven't allowed any negativity into my life. Well, great. If that's what you want, awesome. But you also haven't allowed for any good and you haven't allowed for the possibility of change and the possibility of the new. You know, you, you've you sat in this high castle isolating yourself from the entire world and what good is that going to do you in the long run so don't allow the fact that you have been in an abusive situation dictate your future choices because when we do this when we say i'm never going to allow somebody with toxic traits ever to ever enter my life at any point in time again when we say that guess who wins the cluster B that abused us wins. The cluster B that targeted us wins because that means that they are still dictating our choices. The fact that they exist, the fact that they are a cluster B and that they've treated us so poorly is still dictating our choices, which essentially means that we haven't healed from the situation. And of course, without self-examination, true self-examination, I mean, and without doing some deep work and some shadow work and some light work too um, on ourselves, we can't heal. It's not possible. So we have to acknowledge the subconscious mind. We have to acknowledge the positive and the negative. And we have to acknowledge the possibility for future positive situations and future negative situations. And we have to be able to make sure that we are taking a very balanced approach to life. And when we do that, not that it's ever just a win-lose situation, but when we do that, it's us that wins. It's us that wins. We're taking ourselves back. We're taking control back from that awful person who abused us and treated us so poorly. And at that point, you know, we're winning. We're living the dream.
right? So food for thought, don't fall into the integrity trap. Don't fall into the purity trap and don't trap yourself, right? Don't allow the behavior of this person who treated you so poorly to dictate what you're going to do now. Let that be a lesson to you and let it guide you when you meet somebody who genuinely displays five or more of the major diagnostic criteria we've discussed before for a cluster B personality disorder on a regular basis. Of course, let, let this experience guide you to finding those people and truly um, eliminating those people from, from your life and being able to deal with them if you can't, right? So let that experience inform you in that way, but don't let it control the choices you're making and don't let it make you suffer in life, right? Um, I really hope that this helps. I feel like I'm really speaking from personal experience today and from, from the bottom of my heart, and I hope that it is helpful to you um, if you employ the law of attraction, I, I don't mean to offend. I just um, feel very strongly about that. And we will talk about it in future videos uh, because that actually, um, that practice, that practice um, erodes your sense of empathy. It erodes your ability to feel, to perceive, and to act on empathy. And, and what happens when we have no empathy, folks? We become a cluster B. Um, you know, for me, that's not an option. And, and I hope that you feel the same way. Uh, if you don't, I, I respect that and I wish you the best. And I hope that you will do some further consideration uh, in future of, of what you're choosing to make a part of your personal set of beliefs and, and your personal reality. So, Whatever you do, uh, be healthy, be well, and have a wonderful day. And you know what? Make it a narcissist-free, cluster-be-free day. Be well, take care of yourselves, and have a wonderful, wonderful day.